And I think when you add in uh, freely available, so uh, the majority, vast majority of the population, 71% uh, compared to 29% that believe otherwise, uh, think that uh, this should be uh, at the very least legally available medically and, and uh, otherwise available to, to anyone over the age of 18. So it's, if you look at other areas of law, there's actually not as much consensus about other issues uh, usually as this. So it's ironic that while the majority of the population, I think here in Canada, the last serious poll that I read, it's kind of old, but they said 93% of Canadians believe in the medicinal use of cannabis. It's been a couple of years since a new poll has been done on that. But uh, certainly, uh, you know, it's the vast majority of people are behind it. So um, we're really hoping for some serious changes in the United States uh, under the new administration. Um, gee, I'm barely going to get to talk about this. <laughs> um, the uh, drug czar for the, under the new uh, Obama administration is the chief of police, former chief from Seattle. And uh, apparently, he took that position over after the city had uh, had a uh, bylaw pass and a vote that told police to make it the lowest possible priority. And the medical laws had been brought into effect as well. Under his guidance, the Seattle Police Department gave out the lowest number of possession charges of any major city in the United States. So he inherited these laws and rules and his department abided by it. They didn't waste their time with a whole bunch of possession charges and, uh, you know, have fest rages on. And uh, I think, uh, as you know, you'll hear next week, uh, the uh, real uh, strides that are going to be made, I think, at this point in court are going to be made through medical users and medical clubs. Um, there's more and more effort and thought being put into that. In fact, that's why next week I want to focus on the VIX trial, because I attended over 40 days of that court case. I've been through several of my own cases for medical marijuana in my store. So I've seen and heard a lot about what to do, and I'm prepared constantly to go to court for one of my growers. And so uh, part of next week is not only helping others uh, in, in sense prepare and think about how to deal with court cases for medical use, but also in a way to even help myself uh, continually stay in that state of awareness. Um, but, uh, you know, changes, uh, it is happening through the power of people. Oh, yes, that's the end of my slideshow. I didn't want to focus like a four minutes to talk about the Supreme Court of Canada decision. So, uh, just real brief here. Um, after a number of people were arrested in the 90s, um, this case got before the Supreme Court of Canada. The decision was made in 2003 in December. Uh, it's known as the uh, Melma Levine, Kane, Clay uh, decision. Those are the three people that ended up grouping together. And uh, it was a six to three decision, so it wasn't a consensus decision by any means. And uh, I think that's really important because sometimes you know judges and others will be like, hey, you know, uh, you lost at the Supreme Court, and and really, you know, that's a very narrow vote. You know, a swing of two more judges would have meant a five to four decision in our favor. And uh, I think there are some serious flaws in the arguments that were used by the majority. And I think that there is some very wise words as well in the minority decision. Uh, and in fact, uh, I'm gonna read a little bit from the minority uh, decision. And uh, what was written by, at the time, uh, uh, Supreme Justice, uh, Supreme Court Justice Louisa Boer, who turned out later to join the United Nations and be in charge of their war crimes tribunal until this past year when she resigned. Um, now she is quoting from a uh, the a case a, a, a judge right here, um, Howard, who made the earlier decision in Kane. And this is just summarizing some of the problems uh, with 
the, the law as it stands, that the courts will even recognize. Countless Canadians, mostly adults and young adults, when adolescents, sorry, are being prosecuted in the criminal courts, subject to the threat of and branding of criminal records for engaging in an activity that is remarkably benign. Estimates suggest over 600,000 Canadians now have criminal records for cannabis-related offenses. Meanwhile, others are free to choose to consume society's drugs of choice, alcohol and tobacco, even, those, even though these drugs are known killers. Two, disrespect for the law by upwards of one million persons who are engaged in this activity, notwithstanding the legal prohibition. Three, distrust by users of health and educational authorities who in the past have promoted false and exaggerated allegations about marijuana. The risk is that marijuana users, especially the young, will no longer listen to the truth. Four, lack of open communication between young persons and their elders about the use of the drug or any other problems that they are experiencing, given, given that it is illegal. Five, the risk that our young people will be associated with actual criminals and hard drug users who are the primary suppliers of the drug. Six, the lack of government control over the quality of the drug on the market, given that it is available only on the black market. Seven, the creation of a lawless subculture whose only reason for being is to grow, import, and distribute a drug which is not available through lawful means. Eight, the enormous financial costs associated with the enforcement of the law. And nine, the inability to engage in meaningful research into the properties, effects, and dangers of the drug because possession of the drug is unlawful. So that was the, in the dissent opinion in Kane, which led towards the Supreme Court decision. And uh, you know, it's, it's, I think, important to realize that even though we've lost in these different levels, you know, we do have judiciary who believe in the same things that we believe in. You know, uh, we have police officers that will come to conventions and other you know, people. You may have read the article, uh, the editorial in the Times columnist last week as well, uh, saying that uh, uh, these uh, laws are, are ineffective. And uh, so again, uh, you know, next week I'll, I'll focus on uh, the VIX trial. Um, I know it's a bit all over the road today, but uh, I think it's really important to understand uh, how trials work. Um, again, I've been through many of them myself, so I'm going to be talking about expert witnesses and and patient testimony. Uh, I'm going to be talking about arguments that are successful, about how to prepare for court, both as a patient and as a medical marijuana club. And you know, I'm going to uh, suggest different arguments that may or may not be successful right now as well. And uh, you know, really try and, and build from what I and I, I think the community has learned from the uh, the trial that uh, Matt and Vix have gone through recently. So that'll be next week's uh, lecture. Uh, it, uh, yeah, again, it'll be a lot more focused than today. Uh, the cannabis and the law is almost so broad, I could uh, uh, talk about it uh, in all sorts of ways. But uh, there it is. Um, and yeah, the uh, classes are ending real soon. So uh, we're going to be posting something on our internet tomorrow on the hempology.ca forums, uh, just for people online, I guess, more than in this room. But uh, we're going to be starting a club up at Malaspina University or the Vancouver Island University at, by the end of this year. And March the 5th, next Thursday, we're actually at Malaspina University. And we want to book a time and date for a film festival and such uh, at the end of March. So today and tomorrow, we're going to put notice out and start uh, collecting an email list of students that might be interested at UBC in helping us uh, get this club going. So. Anyone knows a UBC student who uh, smokes the odd herb that might be willing to help, um, please let us know. So uh, other than that, thanks everybody for coming. We'll see you back here next week. Smoke yeah.